Oshkosh was back at CES 2025 to talk about their electric and autonomous innovations and how they're transforming our world in four different areas, the neighborhood of the future, job site of the future, and airport of the future. To start with, I learned why my favorite race vehicle is the reason why I keep seeing my favorite electric vehicle in Metro Detroit. So, so Pratt Miller brings the racing heritage to, to the Oshkosh team, plus a lot of the technology development uh, that they're doing for all, both on the autonomy side, the electrification, and uh, that really supports a lot of the development and the capability that Oshkosh has as well. So we're gonna transition over to the neighborhood of the future, and you'll see a lot of these technologies mm -hmm. that Oshkosh and the Fred Miller team has worked together on developing uh, over the last few years. I'm fascinated by this vehicle. Check out my other videos. The same engineers who make Corvettes deliver wins are working to make these vans reliably deliver packages. This is our uh, Volterra. Uh, full electric, uh, fully integrated refuse vehicle. Uh, this has been, uh, we launched into production last year and we're ramping up production. Uh, our, our main customer for this right now is Republic Services and we have uh, quite a few, a few dozen of these vehicles operating today. Uh, as I mentioned, this is fully integrated chassis and body designed around the operator. It's, uh, it does full day operation on electric only. Um, and uh, it's able to pick up, you know, over a thousand homes, 1,200 homes uh, on a single charge and then, and then charge at charge night. My dog, she hates the sound of the diesel truck coming. She knows it's garbage day. Between that and the brakes squeaking at every house, it's, uh, this would be a much nicer experience for her. Fine operation is, is, is an important part. I think it's gonna allow us to extend the hours that we can run these vehicles, uh, you know, in the neighborhoods. So this is a, a fully electric automated side loader arm. Uh, you know, typical ones that you see in the field are hydraulically operated. And so as we transition to our DV vehicles, we're trying to A, improve the efficiency. And so by going to full electric with electromechanical actuators, you, got, you get better range on the vehicle. But not only that, the controllability and the speed of the operation get a significant improvement as well going electric. We're also in, incorporating a lot of the vision systems in here to automate the operation. So identify a garbage can and only operate this uh, arm when you see a garbage can and not something else. One of the challenges in this industry is when, when they're picking up recycling, people are throwing uh, contaminants into recycling. So that ruins the entire load of recycling when you have these contaminants. So using his vision systems and machine learning, we're able to identify and train these models to identify garbage cans in a recycling load identify styrofoam, identify yard waste, and alert the operator and uh, be able to do something about it rather than lose the entire load because of contaminants. Well, it wouldn't be uh, CES without saying the word AI. So you're saying AI. this is an AI-powered, AI. AI. Uh, AI-enabled. What else you want to hear? AI, machine learning, <laughs> vision systems, yeah, all that stuff. All right. Let me introduce you to Harry. Harry is our hailable autonomous refuse robot electric. Harry is intended, is a concept intended for master planned communities of the future. You simply um, pair it with your mobile, it has a mobile app, or you say, Alexa, please send Harry to pick up my garbage. We all say, please, I know I do. Harry will come directly to your front door. You put your garbage in, you're gonna have more than this, we know. And then you will push this button and send Harry on its way to the community's centra centralized waste depot. Once at the waste depot, it will be picked up by one of our larger trucks in one streamlined and coordinated process. Reducing carbon footprint, enhancing efficiency. That's the name of the game. It applies to garbage as well, where trash meets technology. So this is our Volterra uh, zero emissions electric fire truck. Uh, this is also in production as we launched that uh, last year and, and uh, we have several of them operating with uh, a few of our customers around uh, around the, the, the nation here. This vehicle will operate on electric only mode. It's got a, a battery pack somewhere in a 250 kilowatt hour uh, capacity. Um, it operates on electric only both for uh, driving and for uh, pumping water as well. But what's unique about it is it also has a backup diesel engine. So in the event that you're putting out a fire and you are sitting at a fire scene for extended amount of time, hours and hours, and you deplete the battery, 
there's an engine that will automatically kick in and you can continue uh, doing your firefighting uh, with no, with, you know, seamless, without an impact uh, to the firefighters. As we think about the connected job site of the future, what we have to do is overcome some inefficiencies that occur today on the job site or create an ecosystem or an infrastructure that doesn't exist today. So when looking at that, we kind of have four tech lanes to talk about. One is connectivity, the other one is autonomy, then robotics, and also the ability of looking at electrification. So when we think about electrification here, you'll actually see that on the Galileo. The Galileo is an all electrified concept that's actually a hybrid between a boom lift, so bringing people to height, and a rough terrain forklift or telehandler, so bringing material to height. Of course, many unique challenges in doing that, but the really unique thing here is zero hydraulic fluids and zero hydraulics. So it's actually using a linear actuator, which is completely shifting. We've taken some of the concept technology of this and actually productionized it on our scissor lifts and even some other telehandlers that have launched more recently. Now, when you think about the electrified job site, you're gonna have to figure out how are you going to charge this to increase productivity. That's where the autonomous mobile robot comes into play. This is working as an energy bank. And what we're going to see is because of the connected infrastructure, it's gonna communicate and then ultimately find the Galileo and charge it to increase your productivity. This all would not be possible if we didn't have standard Clear Sky Smart Fleet on our equipment, which is our connected infrastructure. And using that, we have the ability to not only locate equipment, get tons of data about the equipment, and allow them to share and communicate with one another. What you're actually going to see is that the AMR using the connected infrastructure is going to identify as the Galileo goes to a yellow, and then ultimately a red identifying a low state of charge. In most cases on a job site today, you would have to get down from the third story, drive the telehandler to a spot, plug it in somewhere, get another telehandler, go back and do your job, and all of these other inefficiencies that impact productivity. In this case, now that it's red, it's identified through the Smart Fleet's ecosystem, come and charge. At this point, it's been summoned. The autonomous mobile robot using LiDAR has actually found its way around. So if I were in front of it, it could navigate around me because you can imagine job sites not as organized or structured as the normal world, in many cases off highway or dirt. It's now locating the Galileo, and as the two come together, it will actually do a transference of that energy, which will be indicated through the colors. So what you'll see is the AMR, which is currently green status for its electric power or energy level, is gonna take the Galileo from a red up to a green and drain the AMR from a green down to a red. The other component here is now what is the energy bank going to do? So just like your Roomba at home, it finishes vacuuming, go back, recharge. Very similarly, lock cooler Roomba, gonna go back, recharge, and then provide the next job to be done. In an ideal world, as you've got 100 pieces of equipment on a job site, you'd also have hundreds of AMRs or also rough terrain applications as well as we solve the unique challenges of that of the future of the construction job site. Yeah, so we're part of Oshkosh Corporation, the, the Aerotech division, we manufacture uh, ground support equipment. Uh, behind us, we've got a display showing all the equipment we manufacture, and we're highlighting the uh, electrification, automation, and connectivity of our equipment. Uh, this optimizes the operations for airlines and airports to reduce their costs and improve your travel experience. So the baggage car we got over here is a prototype showing how that can be automated. They run uh, fairly repetitive routes uh, from gate to gate and from uh, gate to uh, baggage claim. And it allows a, a task that is repeated over and over again to be automated and removes the driver uh, requirement from it. 